Example 9 asks us to take a look at the two graphs below and classify them as either even or odd functions. A given function could be even or odd or could be neither of those two things. So we have three different ways, at least related to even and oddness, to classify a function. We'll take a look at the second graph first, just since the idea of an even function is a little bit easier to grasp. So this second function is an even function, with the reason being we can draw a line, a vertical line, straight through our y-axis, and that becomes a line of reflection, meaning the graph on the left-hand side and the right-hand side are perfect mirror images of each other. If we want to look at identifying some specific points, for instance, the point negative 2 comma 9, if we reflected that point across the y-axis, equidistant from that line, we would find the point positive 2 comma 9. So a perfect reflection over the y-axis. Similarly, with the point negative 1 comma 3, we would find a reflection equidistant from that line of reflection at the point 1 comma 3. And we could continue to identify that mirrored relationship with every single point on the left hand side and right hand side of our graph. So having that even reflection gives us, or I'm sorry, having that symmetric uh, nature about the y-axis means our function is an even function. Since we're also asked to identify the domain and range here, we can do that hopefully quickly. Our domain would be unrestricted, negative infinity to infinity. And our range in this case would be negative infinity, since our graph is continuing to decrease at both ends, all the way up to approximately 11.5. So in this case, we have that um, maximum function value that we would hit. So that second graph represents an even function, since what we have is symmetry about the y-axis. What we're going to have in the first graph is the case of an odd function, meaning this function is reflected about the origin. That can be a little bit harder to picture or visualize. So one good way to break that idea down is to take, as an example, the point 2, 7, and think about reflecting it across the y-axis. And then a second reflection about the x-axis. So that double reflection, or that two-step reflection, leads us to the point negative 2, negative 7. And we can continue to identify that same pattern. For instance, with the point 1, 3, if we reflected this first about the y-axis and then about the x-axis, we would hit the point negative 1, negative 3. So every point on this curve can be reflected across the y-axis and then across the x-axis, meaning it's a reflection about the origin. And we'll see those points mirrored onto the graph. We can identify the domain, in this case, as negative infinity to infinity. And our range, since our function is increasing on one end and decreasing on the other, will also be negative infinity to infinity. But again, the new piece of information here is identifying that even or odd nature. So to have something with an odd, to have a function that's considered an odd function, it needs to be, every point needs to be reflected across the y-axis and then the x-axis. To be an even function, every point needs to be a perfect reflection across the y-axis.